you went to music. You know, you had to physically go to your record player to play music. And then all of a sudden, cassettes came along. And then with the advent of the Sony Walkman, you could take your music with you. And that was liberating. People today don't realize that. It, it was a, a total paradigm shift in how, in how you listen to music. Um, but you could actually record on these little things as well. So not only um, you take music with you, you didn't actually have to buy it. You could borrow your mate's copy of, you know, um, Nils Lofgren or Ry Cooper or whatever, or, you know, the Doobie Brothers, and, and, and record it, and you then, then you could have it. And, and it changed music really radically. Um, but not only that, but then you could make your own little selections. You know, you could say, I'll put two Rolling Stones records, and I'll put the Spencer Davis group, and I'll do the Birds, and so and so. So you could make your own, sort of, your own compilation album. So it, it just changed the way music happened. Totally, and this is kind of, it is all to do with that. Like the most important uh, albums that I got were always on tape, uh, and so they have a real significance for me. And, and it's really important that the way you listen to music totally changes your experience of that music. And um, with tape, it was much more precious than it is now. People say this about vinyl as well, but with tape in particular, you couldn't lift a needle and just put it on somewhere else to listen to a track again. We listened on Walkmans predominantly, and so if you really wanted to listen to a track again, you had to rewind it, and that meant you used battery. So it, it made the music more valuable, and it made the experience totally different to either vinyl or download, or any other way of listening to music. And it, it defined our generation, a little sort of 10, 15 years, really, that were tape, the tape generation. And now, it, it has that nostalgic vibe about it, you know, um, a Sony Walkman is totally useless now, but everybody knows where they were in 1983. You know, so it, it has that 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 it, it, it's that emotional trigger. It's a repository of memory. You know what I mean? And and it's it, it, wasn't that what art was kind of supposed to do anyway? And I think you know, with this, it's taking something is iconic that means something to a lot of people, uh, and it's giving it a form that forces you to think about it and its place in your life. One of the, the big pop art tropes of the sixties was the elevation of the mundane. You know, a soup can. Come on, you know. But and, it's, and that, but that's kind of what I like to do with these cassettes. You know, it, it's, it's exactly the same. I think I consider myself a, a, work, a pop artist working in the same. The same vein as like people like Andy Warhol or Roy Lichtenstein. Oh, I think the artwork is really good. Um, it brings back to lots, lots of memories of the old school days of recording stuff off the radio and writing tapes up and doing all the uh, the Dolby noise reduction and the stereos and mono and Dolby and all that on the tapes. It does bring back some good memories. Well, pop art was um, disposable, uh, ephemeral. Um, <clears throat> Mass produced, you know. I mean, hello, you know. I think it's fantastic. I think it's, it's amazing. And being an artist myself, I can see how long it must take. It's like so, it's like so hyper real. It must take a very, very long time to sort of do what he does. And uh, yeah, it's really impressive. The amount of men in their mid 40s and 50s who come up to me and you know, with the cassettes and go, I've got a box load of them in my garage, is it is amazing. I've got a loft full of tapes, but I ignore them completely. And this, the other day, because I'd seen this art, it forced me to get them out and look at them and think about the times we've had together. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous, but you know, the tapes I've got, and they meant so much to me. Understanding the end of one album, uh, one song on an album led into the next one, meant that they were a family of songs and not individuals. And that was, that, that's a really important thing. It, it, it gave it a solidity and a form and a shape. You know, and it, it brings it all back to me, you know. You've done too much, much too young. Now you're married with a kid when you could be having fun with me. Oh, no, don't you eat no more big thing. You've done too much, much too young. Now As a musician, I'm a team player. I have to work with a drummer. I'm a bass player. So I don't play a melody instrument, I don't sing, so I, I have to work with a drummer, a keyboard player, a guitar player, whatever, a vocalist to make to make things happen. With the art, it's me. I you know it's the art is my solo album. You know, this is me, you know, the, the work um, stands or falls by my efforts only, not as a part of a team.
pop art in the 60s was to art what punk rock was to rock and roll in the late 70s. You know, um, here were all the, the abstract expressionists, you know, pondering the great, you know, um, existential mysteries of the age through colour, and along comes this bloke with a suit can. You know, I mean, and, and you know, just as like, you know, um, Queen were a pompous, bombastic rock, and uh, Yes uh, it, um, released a triple album and all this kind of, and along comes Anarchy in the UK and blows everything out of the water. It's exactly the same for me.